Hi, this is Nicholas Yock, a registered migration agent from Pathway to Oz. And today I'm going to discuss with you um, meeting the de facto visa requirements. And most importantly, what documentation sort of you must provide to meet this requirement. So if you're not married, to be able to apply for any sort of partner visa, um, you know, or be added to your partner's a visa as a secondary applicant, um, you must be classified as a member of the family unit, uh, which means you must meet what's classified as the de facto requirements. That is to say, if you wanted to be added, you know, to your partner's visa, or you do want to apply for a partner visa, you can't just be, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, immigration, you know, don't care if you endlessly love each other. That he is your soulmate, you know, uh, that when you separate your heart aches. Immigration don't care about that. What immigration care about is the documentation you can provide on paper to show you meet the de facto requirement. So to meet the de facto requirement, you must prove that you and your partner have a mutual commitment to a shared life to the exclusion of all others. You are in a genuine and loving relationship and you live together and do not live separately on a permanent basis. For each visa, the requirements are different, but some of the, doc, you know, some of the requirements that the immigration will judge the de facto relationship on include the financial aspect of the relationship, the nature of the household so that you live together, the social aspect of the relationship, and you know, the, your, your commitment to your partner. So generally speaking, once again, generally speaking, to have your visa approved, you must demonstrate that you have met the de facto requirement for at least 12 months before you lodge the application. So you need to show that you know, you're over 18, you're not married, you're in a mutually exclusive relationship, the relationship is genuine and ongoing, and you are not living apart on a permanent basis during that time. I think the most important part of it is that you know, the living together or not living separate for more than 12 months. That's you know, kind of something which is always difficult to get around. On very rare circumstances, can this 12-month requirement get waived? So, once again, this is very, very rare. Um, immigration is heartless. They don't care, um, you know, about your circumstances, how much you love your partner. If you're going to be separate, it's going to hurt. Um, for example, immigration blatantly state that a pregnancy at the time of application is not required, is not considered compelling and compassionate circumstances enough to waive the 12 month living together requirement. So very rarely would that be waived. Um, however, please note, if you want to waive that 12 month requirement, if you register your relationship in a relevant state or territory, um, you, can, you get a registered relationship certificate and this actually allows you to waive yeah, the 12 month you know, de facto requirement. So we have had, we have assisted some couples in applying for, you know, partner visas or being added onto their partner's visa um, when they've only known each other for, you know, for less than a year. Um, but in, in all those circumstances, we've had them register a relationship by, in a relevant state authority. All right, so let's look at some of the documentation that we'd recommend providing, you know, to meet the de facto requirement. Um, so firstly, let's look at some of the documentation you can provide for the financial aspect of the relationship. Uh, so this is easy, you know, things like a joint bank account set up and used. Don't just set up a joint bank account and have it sit there not being used. Set up a joint bank account and use it regularly for groceries, for your rent. You know, they want to see activity in the account. Um, you know, you can also show if you transfer funds to each other, um, if you guys pull together for a joint purchase such as a car, holidays, a partner visa, um, if you guys have any shared loans or anything like that. Um, or, you know, sharing household expenses. So the nature of the household, so they want to see that you've been living together. So obviously a joint lease agreement is excellent, um, but, you know, we're realistic. We understand that, you know, sometimes if you're traveling or if you're on a working holiday visa, you don't have, you know, joint agreements or maybe you're living with their parents, whatever it is. In that case, we want to get statutory declarations from your housemates. Um, we also want to get things like correspondence sent to the same address. It doesn't need to be joint, but you know, maybe you've got your, a, a letter from the ATO and your um, bank statement and your utilities bill and your partner's got you know, the other correspondence which both say your name and the address on it and you can use that to show that you were living together. Um, obviously, you know, if you own a property, that's great. Um, 
if you you know got hotel bookings or long stays together you can also use things like that such as airbnb stays etc um, so that probably the easiest thing to demonstrate is the third which is the social aspect of the relationship so this is easy guys this is photos don't overwhelm immigration with photos don't give them 200 photos they don't care give them photos staggered throughout the duration of the relationship and give them photos you know in meaningful events like when you met their family or at christmas or at sporting events and things of that nature don't give them a million selfies together they don't it doesn't work it works but it's not that useful uh, additionally you'd get friends to write statutory declarations or 888 forms supporting the relationship um, i mean you'd show joint invitations to weddings or parties or you know basically if you've got joint if you go to the same gym or if you go on travel your travel itinerary hotel bookings that sort of stuff basically just showing to immigration that you display yourself as a couple to society so the final thing uh, and which i think is probably the most important is demonstrating to immigration the commitment uh, this can be quite difficult sometimes, but obviously, you know, if you register a relationship in a state or territory, uh, that's things. You can do things like make the other person the beneficiary of your superannuation. So if you pass away, they get that. You can make them the secondary driver on your car insurance. Uh, you can put them in your will. You can make them your power of attorney, etc. Um, immigration also look at things like the duration of the late relationship for commitment. So it's always important to write like a detailed sort of statement you know, explaining to immigration your relationship, how it progressed, you know, and the important sort of parts and times throughout it. So basically, when applying for the visa, it's important that you provide all the documentation on paper at the time of application, because at the time of application, you need to meet the de facto requirement. You can't provide it six months later or, you know, if you register a relationship after you um, have lodged the application, immigration don't care. You need to lodge it when you apply. Look, so I hope um, now you have a, a general overview of the de facto requirement, you know, why it's important and some of the documentation you'd need to provide for it. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free, you know, to contact Pathway to Oz and we're more than happy to, you know, sit down, go through a migration consultation and discuss your situation further. Thank you.